Thank you for joining the March 13th, 2018 Volta TST call. Uh, we're, we'll be going over issues for 1.3, Sprint 3, and a few other miscellaneous topics today. And we are recording the meeting so that it can be posted to the Volta playlist later. So please keep that in mind during the discussion. And the agenda for today, we're going to start off as usual, kind of going over uh, new issues. We had a couple new JIRAs opened up. And then also we'll do a status update on 1.2.1. And then go over updates on the main topics for Sprint 3 and some miscellaneous issues. And then, so Chip, is the end of the meeting still best for you for the, OMC, the Open OMCI MIB database proposal, or is it better to move it to a different time? I, I, I can do it any time. I, I was able to get through my appointment this morning early. Okay. So I'll, and, okay, I'll leave it where it is for now then. Just wanted to check with you on that, so thank you. All right, so going over to the new issues. We do have one new item here. Let me move my, this over my screen so I can see it. Okay. I opened that one. So, yes. Hi. Thanks for joining, Sean. And so this one is for the Broadcom ONU adapter to support the vendor ID of other ONUs based on the Broadcom SBC. So uh, any additional comments you may want to make on that item, Sean? No, I think I, I think uh, most of the pretty self explained yeah, pretty self self explained. Unless okay. um, at one time I thought it would the, the the list on the on the program can support multiple um, vendors ID, but as as far as last time when I saw it, it didn't do that way. So um, so what is the intent? I think uh, you know every time when we introduce one. ODM vendor with using Broadcom, then we had to create a new adapter. I think that's that's not. Um, I think the common adapter will be a better approach with a multiple uh, vendor ID list or the other way to approach that. With, you know, to address the vendor, the vendor ID and the zero number. So um, I, I list this as the priority low. Um, uh, this doesn't prevent us from adapting. Um, other, for example, TNW or Alpha Network, um, we just have to create uh, multiple duplicate uh, adapters right now. But at the event, eventually, I think the same adapter need to be able to support all of them. And I don't know whether this will be part of the um, whether Open OMCI, you know, will re uh, address the, the similar question like this one. But uh, I do want to put this on the record. Right, we do have a, a similar question, I think, for the Open OMCI, because we've talked about a common adapter for use, and I believe that was loosely targeted for 3.0 a year ago, and so I was thinking it probably would move into 2.0, but with low priority, I'm not sure there. And do we have comments from the group? I think that was Chip. Yeah, I thought he might be trying to make a comment. Yeah, oh no, no I, 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 a common adapter might be difficult, but a lot of shared code would probably be yeah. fairly easy. Okay, so Sean, for a, a target release, what are your thoughts here with low priority? Right now, um, I would like to see 1.3 but as I said, this low priority, we can put it on 2.0, so that's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, but if, if uh, people already have the fix, um, I'm welcome them to put into 1.3. Okay, we've got about a week and a little over a week and a half left in uh, Sprint 3. So I'll let the the folks on the call comment if they think that's feasible. Otherwise, I think it probably needs to, we can place it in 2.0, and if people can pull it in, that's fine. Comments from the group? Uh, it probably depends on how common the Broadcom can be for Broadcom-based own use for the stack. So I know when uh, we re you register own use, uh, XPOM goes through and looks up to launch 
the device adapter, if that was made a list, that would probably greatly simplify things. It's just that once you actually start doing any of the OMCI or any, any of the particulars, that might be dependent upon the OMCI stack on the ONU. So I, 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 the initial portion, I think, would be very easy, just making the list that XBON works off of. Correct. I think I think there was a try. We can make a list, but it's, it's the only, I think only pick the first one or last one. Um, so the the one you never synced up, right? So so, um, as I, uh, I think I, I, Julie put it two dot zero. That's fine. Um, okay. But as I said, okay. uh, if people has been working on this, because I I, I did hear um, the list was supported, but you know when we tried last time in lab, it didn't work. So so uh, um, that's why I bring this up. If okay. if, if something uh, if per design the list is working, but it's not, then that could potentially become a bug. Yeah. Okay. So I think it it might be possible to investigate that portion during 1.3 and see see if that list portion can be resolved. Okay. Uh, let's see, check mark here. Any other questions from the group on that before we move on? Okay, then let me go back to the new issues. I believe we had a new one that had been opened by Jason as well. So 647. So sending the MIB reset five times when Volta configures each uni port. Okay, yeah, and so this was, oh, go ahead, Jason, were you gonna make a comment? Yeah, I was the tester is the is the Volta one dot two, and I connect to uh, on you, but uh, I found I found that before the version is is only configure pole, and uh, second pole the uh, uni pole the second pole I, I think, but uh, this this time I I, I download a new the source code, I I. I did a test uh, again, but I found uh, this version configure uh, five ports. Can you and you can see uh, the piece of uh, source code on the screen. So you can see you can define a unipole the one, two, three, four, five, six, and a four pole on there. So so and uh, this mean is uh, it. it it, and uh, it can configure the uh, four port and uh, uh, port on you of on you. So, but uh, and uh, one question is uh, the in uh, function is the message is sent is changed. In this function is is a call to the main reset. Main reset. As we know, I mean the main reset. I mean the and the AV MIP is is gone. So, it, so maybe you want to configure the on you, just send the mid reset at the first only. So, but there is a mistake. So you, you and uh, this that does not uh, configure the unit uh, uni port and then the send to the mid reset. So this I I I I want to talk about uh, this mistake. Well, with with the open OMCI code that's going in one, um, that will take care of this issue. Since uh, mid resets and mid uploads are part of the synchronization, before yeah. any before ONU does any attempts to configure ONU ports, I mean uh, uni port. Yeah, this yeah the, this this issue I think came about because there was a recent change to enable all the the uni ports with that um, adapter, and um, this is a side effect of of doing that the the mid interaction and the messages that get sent to the ONU weren't very sophisticated in this um, in that Broadcom ONU adapter and and by um, making that change to enable the five unis, 
um, the way that code worked is it is it did the the entire the entire sequence um, five times over. So um, so that, that's basically the 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 consequence of of enabling all the all the UD ports at once on on the, on the ONU without you know without a little bit more sophisticated uh, mechanics of, of how to send all those messages. Yeah, yes, I agree. So, but uh, but what we need to make sure that mean we said uh, just uh, send one time at the first. It it doesn't need uh, to send every time. So that's my my questions. Yeah, that's how it definitely how it how it should work. So um, um, I, I think there maybe was some um, limited testing, insufficient testing on that on that change that came in. So is that a bug or something was not implemented correctly? Um, yeah. Well, it was. Yeah, it's it's both a bug and and a limit. It, it, the bug was introduced because the 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 OMCI message exchange that Broadcom ONU adapter was doing was not very sophisticated. So um, so that that part wasn't addressed. So there's there's two ways that you know this can probably be handled is to go back and do more work in the Broadcom ONU adapter to. You know, to suppress the MIB reset to factor some of that stuff out, so it does you know the common stuff separately, or um, revert the change and have it just go back to enabling only only port two as it as it originally did. Um, we actually have Samuel Chan on the call, um, so from Broadcom. Um, so so one two three four five is the five the ten gig port on the reference uh, reference uh, ONU right it's the yeah that's, that's for all um, it's an enabling all five unit ports that are out there see that Broadcom ONU adapters it does not go and and actually do an um, do an inventory or a survey of the of the ONU to find out what's actually out there it just had some um, it was just set up to to put out just some known sequence to you know with with presumed assumptions on the MEs that are out there and the unique configuration that's out there um, and it just it, it's always been like that and I don't think there's there hasn't been any refactoring investment and refactoring of that adapter because we kind of knew there was going to be improved uh, you know the improved OMCI framework that could come in so so that's just kind of the summary and, and Sam could you know, comment as well. I I I I think that Broadcom ONU can accept the BB set. So, so and uh, but but I think is uh, this is uh, obviously a bit heavy and is now regarding to uh, uh, the what the uh, what kind of name the ONU. So, so is it is a that's mean the on the OMCI, the OMCI send message is sent to the ONU. What the what the ONU can can do the main reset behavior, and in 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 its in its code. So so I I, I think the, this sequence maybe maybe can change some, and separate the main, main reset, and not involve the. Involve involve the 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 configuration in every each unit port. Any comment regarding to uh, Jason's um, suggestion? Or okay, so. Julie, I think we're hoping the, the Open OMCI framework will resolve this issue, right? Right. That's the that's the expectation. And so then, I think there's also a question of: it, Do we want to 
do any other modification in advance of that to resolve this issue or just depend on the intro of the open OMCI code for that? Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, I'm just worried whether uh, uh, what, what level of the testing, like Kim was just saying, that what level of testing has been done. Um, hopefully, this you know is just a message and doesn't erase or something like that to to prevent the servers running through continuously. I assume the last MIB reset deletes everything else that got configured, right? So only, only what gets configured yeah. from beyond the last reset is there, right? Yeah, that should be correct. Mm -hmm. So probably just the fifth will be working. Probably what? Sorry? Probably just the fifth report will be working. Okay. Assuming that's the last. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do we want to go ahead and pursue uh, a change on the adapter side, or are folks just wanting to wait and test it with OpenOMCI code when that's available? What do we expect the timeline to be on that? If it's going to be a sprint, then it seems like you wait because why throw away code? If it's going to be six months, then maybe you want to do it a different way. Yeah, the, the open OMCI to, to handle this went into review yesterday. And at the end of the database discussion, I've got a couple slides I can sort of show on on where this how how the framework works if we have if time permits. So given that it, the, the code that fixes this through open OMCI is in review now. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why you wouldn't just wait for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and have that as our plan then, you know, at, at this moment. And so I'll just go ahead and add this comment. We'll have that uh, presentation uh, and material from Chip later on. And then if we need to circle back to this afterwards, we can do that. Does that okay for everyone? So, so okay. does it mean does it mean the 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 code the 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 changes still stay in place and the OMCI uh, code will will resolve the issue or we have to revert back to the original and then let OM, open OMCI to deal with it the, to to oh I'm one thing what open OMCI is going to address the new issue or the old issue. Judy, do you know what I'm saying here? I'm not sure what you mean by new issue and old issue. No, 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 no. So the old what? issue is the only port two is enabled, right? And then okay. Okay. one, one. So the the issue I think the Open OMCI is going to resolve is this one about the MIP reset. Okay. Reset multiple times. Chip, yeah, is that correct? Or or Sean? Yeah, that, that's correct. <laughs> Yeah, MIB, MIB reset only occurs at the beginning of a MIB upload sequence on a new ONU or one that's coming up that's completely out of sync. Um, so pretty much at the responsibility of the ONU is just mainly sets, creates, and deletes, and gets. So it wouldn't actually do any MIB resets. Yeah, and I guess the outcome the, the outcome would, of, of this the code as it exists right now is that port five works, nothing else does. Yeah. And then we bring in the so, old so you need port one just, Yeah, if you need port one, just make it last <laughs> in the sequence. I mean, to be fair, refactoring is going to be required in the ONU, Broadcom ONU adapter to work with Open OMCI, right, Chip? Uh, so, yes, so, but I think it can be done in. A day. Yeah, it's not a lot, but I mean, there's going to be some changes made to work with it, and this could be part of that. So, so, so I, I think the port and uh, port five is the 10 gig port, right? So, for, for the broadcast on you, right? Mm -hmm. I would assume. Yeah. Oh, 
Thank you, Paul. Other discussion? Okay, so are we going to need to open an additional ticket then about the refactoring for the Broadcom ONU to work with Open OMSI, or do we have a ticket on that already? I don't remember if there was an issue. Uh, there, there's one out there. No okay, there is. okay, thank you. And, and I'm actually doing a wiki page that describes the work and the very last, last item, which is of course empty right now, is, is how to convert the Broadcom ONU to make use of it. Okay. I think it should Other be fairly okay. simple and straightforward. That's what Jason needs to pay attention to. Hmm? Instead of trying to fix the existing issue, I think he needs to work with Chip on the documentation and recommendations for how to change the ONU adapter to work with OpenOCI. It will resolve this and other issues. Okay. Thank you, Sean. All right. So the next item we have here is 645. And so this one is related to actually one of our, our items we have on the agenda also, which is the status for the 1.2.1 release. So there has been, and let me see, I'm not sure if John is on. Yes, he is. Was. So there's been discussion on both the discuss as well. And I believe the branch has been created and it's, we're now looking at uh, the next steps for getting the, the release tagged. <clears throat> So I think there was discussion on Volta Discuss about the list of patches, which is also copied in here, and we're ready to move forward. So let's go ahead and cover that agenda item as well now. So Jono, do you need help from the community at this point then in order to get this completed? Yeah, so um, uh, I posted the list of uh, patches to Volta Discuss last week. Um, yeah. and I didn't see any objections to any of those. Um, so I submitted them to Gary yesterday. Um, so we're now at the point where the branch is ready um, and we're, I think we're ready to just tag it and release one to one of Volta. Okay. And, and so at this point, um, I guess- John Jono, after you yeah. tag it, are you also gonna update the Docker build stuff or do you need help with that? So um, I don't know what the release process for Volta is. So I was hoping to get some help from either you or um, uh, Kim to to actually do the tagging and or do the release process. Um, I, I can certainly help out okay. if, if that's needed. But. David, was the okay? Does that mean that's something that you're willing to assist with? Or was that just... <laughs> um, yeah. I, <laughs> Am I reading I, too much? I will, work, I will endeavor to, to leverage Jono to uh, get the release done. <laughs> if, you guys can, if you guys can tell me what to do, I can do it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same release pattern as with Onos, right? Yeah. Tag a branch and you're done, right? And so it's, okay. it's, that's pretty, it's pretty much the same thing. And and you just push the images to Docker Hub manually? No, no. If, if you, for the stuff to Docker Hub, uh, it's actually building in Docker Cloud. So I'll, I can I'll be uh, at Menlo today, so we can walk through that too. Okay, cool. Sounds good. And then the the other piece is that, as Kim mentioned, we um, need to tag one to one uh, on the ASF vaults uh, adapt. Uh, sorry, the the OLT code as well. Yeah, that's that's pretty minor and easy. We just need to drop the tag on yeah. the commit that we mentioned. Yeah, yeah, that should be pretty easy to do. I still have the video I need to post regarding to the, the when Kim, when you recorded, when you did the tagging of the 1.2. So um, the file, yeah, was, the file yeah, was a little bit big for the, the, the wiki. So yeah, that was duly posted, yeah. Sure, yeah, I can help you with that. All right. Um, okay. Julie, oh, Julie yes? do we do we need to attach a release note with this one? I was going to ask about that too. We still, I think it still shows draft for 1.2. So let's get that cleaned up because I think the work is complete on the 1.2 release notes. So let's you and I try and get that done. And then I think likely we should do uh, some notes for 1.2.1 to show the issues that are included in there as well. Thoughts from anyone else? 
<laughs> I'm not hearing anything. People don't read them anyway, so. <laughs> Uh, okay, shall I ask it then? Do we need release notes? I think since we're yeah, yes, we do we need expand, release notes, so and I yes, they do need do to it. include they need to include the uh, just as you said, right? Include what jurors were picked, even if it's just a juror query paste. <laughs> <laughs> So Sean, let's get the the final version shown on the wiki um, because right now it's just showing draft for 1.2, and then we'll put together a, a draft for the 1.2.1 and get that posted as well. Okay. All right. So let me go back then. See if there was. Okay, so we have one issue here. Um, 10G traffic not working on Broadcom ONU. And this one was open a few days ago. Uh, it's enabled, but traffic does not go beyond 1.2 gig per second. Anyone on the call with background on this item? Well, this has been demonstrated by uh, various um, various people in the past to see this work. So um, there's a lot of factors that that contribute into seeing the traffic go through there, from the endpoints and you know the source and the sync of the data and, and all that stuff. There's a there's a lot of there's a lot of um, uh, points in there. So, so I'm I'm saying that there's probably not anything yeah. inherently inherently wrong in there. It could be analysis of the of the test setup to see how it's being. Are there, are there look like? Yeah, are there steps in the in the Jira that indicate how to repeat this. No. Yeah, that's. I'm not seeing anything, so I'm putting in a request. Um, for okay. So let me put that comment in. See if we can get some more feedback and find out what's happening there. Okay, so let me go back now. And I think we're almost at the point where I wanted to switch over to <laughs> to Chip's presentation. So we will take a quick look here if there was anything new. I think that may have been the last new item. Grab my there we go. I think that was the last new item. Yeah, yeah I, I submitted a new one yesterday, Vol 649. Oh, I see it. Oh, it may have been. Ah, it was already a 1.3 and I missed it. Sorry. I was oh, looking okay. at the backlog. Yeah, my fault there. So, this is new one on OpenOMCI. Response decode for MIP upload next fails if sequence number is greater than 256. I do remember seeing this one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, any other comments you wanted to give to the group? Uh, no, it's just uh, in the the scapey code when it's doing uh, mid upload next response decode and probably even get all all, all alarms next. Uh, the scapey tries to use the attribute, which is only a byte field, for the uh, uh, get request. So either somebody I can I can press the constraint checking if it's on that ID or if there's anybody really good at uh, conditional scapey decode that would be helpful okay questions from the group or comments so this one 
I think likely needs to go in um, the current sprint if possible. Any comments from the group? See if we can find someone to, to. Yeah. Well, I, I have code that will actually suppress the constraint check on that class ID. That works, but the, the best is probably to do it in, with uh, Scapy. So we, we can get a workaround if needed. Okay. So let's see, do we have anyone who would be available to help work on this? So Chip, sounds like we have a workaround from you if needed. Um, but preferably a fix instead of a workaround would be the way to go. Okay, I'm not hearing anything. So in the interest of time, let's go ahead and do this. I'll make a note that uh, to myself here to follow up on this afterwards. Okay, so Chip, thank you for bringing that one up. And then let me go back. And go to the active sprint. We've got our items in here. So first, I think I saw Ken on. Uh, do we have an update on any of the specific tickets related to the Kubernetes work that's been going on? Uh, no update. Things are just uh, moving along. I just, uh, I, I think we'll cut it like a really to the last. Uh, end of uh, Spring 3, it won't be done earlier than that. Uh, it's okay. uh, because there's a lot of cycles through that. There's a lot of installation and thing doesn't work and have to restart again. So it's, uh, it's just a lot of, it's a tedious effort. But still on track for completion at this point, right? I think yeah, I heard but that. It, it will be, yeah, it's on track. It just will be like really, really towards the end of it. It's, uh, it won't be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if it's still on track, I'm fine. <laughs> okay. And then on the open OMCI, so Chip, we'll be going over your presentation on the MIPSync proposal in a bit. Uh, any other comments on the open OMCI status right now? Uh, no, I've just got that one review in, and I'll be working on wiki pages to help support people either reviewing it or trying to consume the work. Okay. And if we have time left over, I can go over some of it if needed. Okay. Then next we have the Redfish related work with Edge Core. And I think I think 312 was the ticket I wanted to open up where we had um, you know some updates after the last meeting from Jason pasted in here related to because uh, we, the discussion last week was that we needed to have the final patch reviewed by the community and then have guidance from the community on how to integrate this into Volta. And we didn't have uh, anyone assigned to pick up that work at this point. There were resource constraints as of last week. So we do have some more details from Jason provided here. So I wanted to make sure that people have taken a look at what he's posted here. And if we have any questions for him, and then also circle back to the community on how we proceed and next steps. So any questions yeah. for Jason? Or Jason, did you want to make some comments? Yeah, I want to mention is the, we add a, a new patch file. It's a ten dot patch file on the on the cloud side. So so. If you download uh, the Redfish source code, and uh, it, it also downloaded the dispatch file already. So you, you can download uh, those files for your testing. So no, no problem right now. And I, I want to mention is the, I, I summarized some case, uh, test case uh, in, in another uh, Another issue is uh, Julie. Can you move move on to the uh, and uh, three three forty three three forty six? Thank you. I'm 
So I, I summarize yeah. the te test case. So you can review the AVK case and the log message. Okay, thank you, Jason. Questions? Welcome, for every, welcome, you come in. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, Jason, thank you very much for doing this. Um, I hope the the Edge Core uh, your the lab setup is in in progress smoothly. Um, so, Kim, Kim, yeah, Kim, yeah. Kim. Okay. Yeah. After yeah. these <laughs> after <laughs> these testing is done, um, where are we on the device management for the Edge Core uh, OOT? Well, so uh, are the the cha the adapter changes have those been um, put up on Garrett for review? Because it looks like um, you know there was that one pretty old patch from CalSoft that was that was out there. So um, I um, think that's in this test report file. If I'd read Jason's comments correctly, was that the changes that were made were in there? So it, I don't believe it's in in Garrett. I think there have been some right. questions previously on how to get that in, and so he, um, some questions on process for him. Um, so right now, I think we just have it in a in a report file, but nothing in. And it's, yeah, the code's in a in a tarball, right? So that is not. Um, we probably the the code has to get up to to Garrett so it can you know get. Um, Merged into the merged into the adapter, so so it can I, all. I, I, I believe Jason expressed, you know, he definitely would like to do that if he can. But right now, I think he needs some help regarding to uploading codes, right? Yes, so, that was the last status for that. So 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 Kim, again, so if the code got, I think I. You know, it's not only AT and T. I think other service provider probably would like to have this one progress and closed um, in 1.3, um, since you know this thing has been around like more than three months now. So, what, once the code is update uploaded, either by Jason or some other people can help. Um, what what is the next step? That's my question. Or shall we? Address this question in the voter discuss or something. Well, definitely there was the related what the related issue was the um, overall. Julie, what was the Jira for the overall integration uh, testing? Yeah, um, that one there was, is still in the to do column. Right, and so that was almost the the terminal. Um, 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 Jira for for the all the steps to, to to deal with that, and it doesn't sound like um, like we're totally there yet, because there has to be some some um, cross coverage um, so that you know we um, you know other users of the um, of the um, of edge core with this all integrated in and integrated with the bow can can all see that it's that it's um that it's working okay so and it doesn't look like um, um it, I, I mean we we haven't hit the first bullet on this so the the adapter and driver components are in in, in garrett all right so the you know one of the the, the first you know the the first requirements are are not there, so um, but I, I guess it comes down to really where okay Edge Core needs help on this. They need more help from the community. Who in the community can you know jump on this and you know and provide resources to to, to push this to push this forward? Because you know I know everybody's you know after this and, and looking for it, but. Um, you know who is who is going to actually own bringing this, you know, into into the Edge Core uh, box and have it in, in, you know integrated properly into you know in, into the um, adapter solution. 
Okay. Um, okay. Oh, go ahead, Sean. Didn't mean to interrupt you. Well, I think we just, uh, Jason. I think we need to work together and then try to uh, see what other option we can we can, we have. Yeah. Um, I, I I originally thought once these testing has confirmed, then the code will be uh, uh, integrated in some way. I guess I'm. So that that's a mean that we we want to change the the class of the proposal or another option for a new redfish functionality. Or we just we just keep keep on keep going the class of the code uh, and and uh, if we if we and uh, we will. We welcome to uh, your comment and and for uh, uh, cross of the call, and uh, we can uh, modify some source code for uh, for uh, for uh, what what is a requirement and uh, for refish the functionality. So so right now we we just test in the cross of the. And and uh, this is the milestones and milestone stage. So so and uh, I I I need a, I need a some the comment to the 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 those source code what's going on to move moving forward to the next stage. Yep. So we we want to know that this the test case this those test case is working on working. Is it working or not? So, so we we, we uh, and uh, we we can talk about the ne next the more more source code modifications. Okay, so I think what we'll need to do is follow up after the call uh, to see if we can find a community resource to help work with getting these changes into Garrett. So that we can move forward, since that's a, a bit of a stumbling block at this point. So, uh, Sean, I think you mentioned that also. So let's talk afterwards, and uh, maybe we'll try and cover that over Volt to discuss to see if we can find a resource. Um, so we maybe I didn't phrase it well enough last time, but we did have have comments last time that we needed help on how to get it integrated into Volta, but we need a, a step before that on getting it into Garrett for review first. So we'll work on that offline. I think as we're about uh, at the point where I need to hand over to Chip to go over the open OMCI proposal. So any last comments uh, or questions, Jason, from you or from others on, on the Redfish work right now? Okay, I think what we'll do is then um, move over. If if you're ready, Chip, I can give you presenting right to go over your presentation. Sure, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, all right. And just a reminder, we're recording it, so make sure you have your screen in good shape. And I will hand this yeah, over to you. We've got about 15 minutes left at this point. Okay, that should be good. Can, you, can people see my screen okay? Yes. Okay, yeah, last time we had trouble with my audio. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to present what the, uh, how, how I was gonna lay out the MIB database for any entries for the class IDs in all the instances and the attributes. And the main characteristics is I wanted to keep the uh, database API to be fairly simple um, since it's going to be external. And of course, if we want to eventually move OpenOMCI either into a container or into a core, I want to make sure that it's it's ready for that and, and the porting should be very uh, simple or straightforward. Um, and what I was looking at was maybe first looking at making use of the Volta uh, core config classes to use the uh, console key value store and to base that rooted off an OMCI key off the 
devices tree. And of course I can move this to a, to a rooted value if needed. But I thought by placing it underneath the device ID, if a device is actually deleted, it would help be, it would automatically clean, clean up any MIB database or any state information, maybe from an alarm synchronizer in the future. So, and then the other part is make, make use of the open OMCI entity class attributes so that some of the complex data, the bit, bit fields, um, large arrays are, are serialized, you know, by making use of the existing uh, SCAPI formatting. And also to also support vendor specific custom ME definitions because a lot of people's during uh, MIB upload, we want to be able to support, um, uh, you know, class IDs that are vendor specific because they, they will be discovered during uh, the MIB upload process. And so that this is basically the base layout that I have for the data MIB database. So what I just said on the previous slide, um, one of the things we probably need to be aware of is that at some time in the future, as changes are made or bug fixes are made in, in some of the complex entity classes that might need to use the SCAPI, say for instance, the uh, DSCP bits, if that's made uh, supported and made a little simpler to use through SCAPI, we might have to rev the version number. But I would prefer not to worry about versioning until after 1.3 and we have some experience. But so version would be one for the 1.3 release, hopefully. And if there are any questions, please, please interrupt me and I'll, I'll try to answer them the best I can. And in the, uh, the Garrett review that I checked in, um, I started the review on yesterday. There is an in-memory uh, dictionary. It's a non-persistent version of the MIB database API. So you can actually go through and, and take a look at how it works because during um, MIB synchronization, uh, if you're doing a resynchronization, you have to have an in-memory copy to compare with what you upload from the ONU. So it made sense to make a fully functional uh, non-persistent version of the database API and I think that should help us that that really helped me flesh out a few ideas so. and as I mentioned the mid database API is fairly simple you know just a simple startup and shut down and that's done it at the ONU startup uh, the ONU is responsible for adding the device or removing it you know from the device entry and then for CRUD operations, I was looking at both create and set to be called through the set function. And typically, that's only called by the MIB synchronizer to actually within the, um, the database itself. Um, the, in the framework, the the OMCI communication channel is monitored on a web interface so that during mid downloads or modifications by an ONU, it, it will catch all the responses and the original transmit frames and, and keep the MIB synchronized uh, during those portions. But that's actually more mid, the MIB synchronizer state machine responsibility. Uh, then obviously there's uh, delete and query capabilities. So the queries would be mostly used for uh, either getting the entire device information uh, or if you wanted to get an entire class such as like the t in case you need to find a free uh, entity ID, you can, uh, you know, you can request it at what level you want. And pretty much all things return as, as a dictionary. And if this goes external uh, in like a different container, we can always change that to JSON as needed. And um, base level of the MIB database and the API, I also want to be able to keep track of a few small items. Uh, one is the 
get the current MIB data sync value, be able to get and set that so that we is not actually need to know this during uh, the synchronization steps. And also you need to know if the database has ever been in sync so you know how to initiate initial MIB synchronization. And then of course it, it monitors for um, and that's pretty much the whole thing. So are there any questions or comments on this or? Chip, you mentioned the um, vendor specific MEs. Um, what specifically is needs to be done there? Do you mean we, you just have to be able to handle those and not blow up or? Because we're really not supposed to have so many vendor-specific MEs anymore going forward. Yeah, go, yeah going forward, we, we don't. But um, we also got to realize that if, say, Deutsche Telekom or some other carriers adopt this, they might want to have other specific requirements to, yeah. to manage off of this. Plus, also existing ONUs might ship with uh, uh, specific uh, uh, vendor specific MEs there. So the way it's handled right now is um, all MEs are all the class ID databases in, is managed by the o current OMCI code and you can pass in additional MEs the pretty much that follows if you look at the um, OMCI entities.py file you can uh, you know provide your own set of MEs a list of them and they can be as simple as just the um, class ID and the entity ID with the data as a blob, because I, you know, it's probably some vendors may not want, even though they have to be able to support those during MIV uploads so that they can see them, they might not want to expose any uh, uh, intellectual property that they might have in those. Does, does that answer your question, Kim? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, where again was the uh, the handling for that? Was that in OM the um, on, on the extensions extensions library? Um, yeah, it's the, out uh, it's out in, in extensions. Yes, it's out in extensions, and in the framework that was provided, um, basically you go out to the to a, a, a open OMCI agent and you. You request to add a device to your device and at that time you can provide um, a list of custom um, MEs to support and you can also provide um, alternative state machines or tasks if you have to do something specific within your implementation and for many people they will probably not do any kind of deviations but if your database gets out of sync and you need to reflow any information down to the ONU that that sequence may be device specific or specific sequence you do. So I wanted to give a chance that or give a capability so that that majorities of the states has can be shared. But if you have something very specific, you can tailor your behavior. And I'll, I'll have all that documented on those set of wiki pages I'm doing. So, so who's um, who's taking care of all the um, the sequence number you use and any retries? Is that a lower level than, than this? Yeah, it, it depends at the like during MIB upload, the initial MIB upload. If you have like a new O and U, uh, Open OMCI handles that in case there's a timeout con condition. Um, if for if you're doing um, your own MIB download, say you're setting the values on a gym gym port, or maybe setting up your bridge, uh, you're com under complete control of that on how that works, and the uh, MIB, MIB synchronization state machine will watch those for successful operation and commit them to the database upon success. 
so 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 we, we so as we know and uh, some of me and uh, is is the attribute is uh, defined to uh, create by the own you right and the sum of the ME is created by the ORT. So, so when when the own you and do, uh, do doing the, the main upload, we need a separate uh, we need a separate the own you create the ME or the ORT create ME, right? Uh, well, I mean, during MIB upload, you'll find if after MIB reset, you'll you'll actually upload the entire MIB that exists. So those those will all be initially. Um, on you created ones. So uh, yeah. I mean, so 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 we we, we and uh, we, we we need to we, we need to de and uh, define uh, the de the the ME database for uh, for uh, OT OT and uh, create and uh, the, uh, some some of ME is OT. Or you created so, so the the mid upload and we we know synchronize the mid upload. So we need to the 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 reconstruct and we want to construct the, the database and the, and the depend on the what vendor the, the on you. So we 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 need to prepare the the, the many attribute from the each ME. So when the make upload come on, so we, we need a, in the we need to save so many the prime parameter into the AV and E the database. So 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 we 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 we, we now we going to the this to do that way. Yeah um yeah, I'm not sure exactly what you're speaking because the, the open OMCI is, even though the ONU is, is, is doing the setting, um, it, it pretty much is behaving like the OLT is actually doing it since um, it's running in the context of the logical device. But it's, as, as, as you do like resynchronization, uh, you, you'll be able to get a copy of what the uh, the synchronization state machine thinks is on the device and what's actually on the device itself. And if there's any differences, you're, you're able to um, reconstruct that if, if within a task. Okay. In case you have to like, you know, bridge specific information that, you know, is, is not uh, created initially by the ONU. Hi, Chip. Uh, yeah, that was J Jason from EdgeCore. Um, yes. One question was, does, so the persistent external key value store database model, so um, that's on the, your first page. So is that a separate database? I think I asked this question before, but I forgot the answer. Is that a se separate database, external database need to be uh, part of the, uh, the framework? No, it's it's uh it's using the existing uh, key value store, pretty much like uh, Device Manager and the XPON uses uh, the MIB database. I mean, not I'm sorry, not the MIB database, but the Volta config store. Mm -hmm. So it's currently in console, and there's a set of classes that abstract uh, some of the operations in case the database needs to be changed out from below. So it, it's it's the existing key value store. Okay. So it's it's just a new leaf on on the uh, database. Okay. So 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 basically, if uh, uh, you know, right now we're using console. So, um, is there any additional things you need to do to store the information on the console, or or uh, it just happens? Uh, it, it it just happens. It's it's actually fairly much more straightforward since the MIB synchronized state machines mostly writing it and I think a lot of a lot of uh, other devices the device manager and XPON actually had to, to react to changes that were made they had to do callbacks when values were changed so that they could reflect those down in the device and we're using it more as as just a 
uh, state storage that's controlled by one process, the Bib State machine. Okay, uh, maybe at some point, I think um, the sequence ID, I, I think the, the OMC interoperability, the, 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 the ME sequencing can be a very strong factor. So I don't know whether our model addressing that or not. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, I guess there's actually, there's actually two, really two major points where that, that becomes an, an issue. One is after, I guess, MIB upload is when you actually so you get all your, your TCOT and GEMPORT information and UNI information and you want to go out and download to the ONU. That, that's done by the ONU device adapter and we watch that process, but mainly just to be able to look at uh, successful responses and store that in the database as well as watch for uh, autonomous value changes, notifications coming up. Second part is is if the MIB data sync value gets out of sequence, or perhaps you know things move cores or are restarted, and you come up and you actually have the MIB database is different than what's actually on the device because maybe it went through a reset. Then that's done during the out of sync state on the in the uh, MIB synchronization state machine, and that might have to be a more custom per own new task to, to write. But that's that's a small task compared to all the other things going on in the background. Okay. So we're just past the top of the hour. So are there any other quick questions or comments for Chip? Okay, so Chip, thank you very much for the presentation. Okay. And again, a reminder to folks that Chip has uploaded uh, some code for review, so if people could take a look at that. And then I think also next w next Thursday on the 22nd, we're going to be targeting a demo for OpenOMCI. So Sean, we have time on this next Thursday call for I think uh, continued discussion related to some of those future framework topics that were on that document sent out by Manuel, if that's a good use of time. But since we're a little past the top of the hour, I think you and I should sync up on, on what to discuss for Thursday. But that is an option for people to go over more proposals to try to do uh, some work in advance of the April meeting to get some progress on community direction for different topics. Okay. Any other comments from the group before we drop the call today? All right. Thank you, everyone. I will go ahead and stop the recording and talk to you soon. Thanks.